Always great having Andrew Sanchez back on the program. He's going to be fighting at UFC Fight Night on October 16th. Andrew, how's it going? I hear you're in San Jose, California these days uh, out of the cold weather in Montreal. Yeah, uh, we decided to make the big change, you know, um, eh, a lot of reasons. But, you know, AK is one of the best gyms in the world, man. And uh, coming down here, I really revamped the, you know, the Sanchez. So I'm... I'm I think it was a good move. Yeah. No, there's a, there's a lot going on in Montreal, especially with COVID and all that stuff too, I imagine. But let me start first with what was the connection to AKA? How did you end up training over there? Uh, you know, like Conrad, my striking coach up at TriStar, um, he reached out actually. He, he thought it'd be a good idea for me to go down there because of COVID and the shutdown of the, of the gym and the borders and like it was a real pain in the ass to train. So um, anyway, he fought Javier Mendez back in the day. No way. And he was no kickboxer. And uh, so, yeah, so that was the connection. He gave him a call, and, and they were very welcoming. And they're, they're really, like, uh, they're team-oriented and kind of, like, strict. So he had to kind of ask everyone if it's okay. You know, if anyone from uh, from the UFC roster wants to come and train, they, like, send a group text to like kind of all their fighters mm-hmm. and say, hey, does anyone have a problem with this guy coming? And luckily, nobody dislikes me here, and they – let me come in. So I've been here for the last about uh, three months. Good for you, man. That's awesome. Well, always good to see a, a change, so to speak. And and like we were talking about, this is something we talked about in the last interview. Like you weren't even actually able to go train in the gym because of all the restrictions, right? Like I'm, I'm in British Columbia, but I know in uh, in Montreal and even Ontario, it's it's pretty restrictive. Like the cops are coming in sometimes. Like a lot of fighters, not just you, but I know a lot of Canadians. Yeah. I don't know. You're, I kind of feel like you are Canadian. We'll just leave it at that. I mean, pretty much. Yeah, you're pretty much Canadian, <laughs> but, but they're going to the U.S. to train because of all the restrictions right now so i'm sure uh, that yeah, was a welcome yeah. change it was it was absurd man like I, w- I was getting ready for several fights you know and we're like fighting at the highest level and we can't even go in the gym we're like hiding like rats from from these cops you know we're just trying to do our job they're banging down the door you know we're parking like way down the down the street to kind of do anything to avoid these guys and at tristar like you know, it's a three-story building. We're on the third floor, and the second floor is this like clothing company, and they like hate fighters or something. They have it out for us, and they kept like ratting on us. Oh, they kept man. snitching and calling the cops <laughs> repeatedly. So like we'd always we change the time to and then to eight in the morning all over, and like the cops they kept they they, they got a tip on these these freaking clothing company people. Um, so we couldn't escape. It yeah. was it was a disaster. Uh, so we all had to kind of like it, it became like fragmented and sectioned off. Like everyone, the, the team kind of split off and do their things in their different locations. And it just wasn't ideal, man. You know, hard to find training partners. You know, no. especially if you got a fight coming up. Yeah, absolutely. And the team atmosphere was kind of you know not so great. And even here in San Jose, I, I think this is like the strictest COVID restriction area, Santa Clara County. Mm-hmm. Um, so I got here right when they like lifted it and the gym was like actually allowed to be open again. Good. Well, at least, at least, at least you're able to train that. That's the main thing here there as well. Is that also why we haven't seen you since January? Was that part of it? Was that you were trying to find the right camp where you could actually train properly? Um, yeah, yeah, partially, but I also had a, a, an injury, you know, I didn't oh, talk I didn't about that. it too much. I didn't want people knowing, but it was like, a uh, in my wrist and, but we got that all figured out, all, all healed up, but um, I was out for a bit, you know, rehabbing, recovering. Okay, so good, um, good timing to take this fight. Then, obviously, by the sounds of it, right, this yeah. kind of ideal time to get back I'm in there. Fire, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's good. Um, anything you can kind of take away from that last fight? I know it didn't go your way. What, what did you sort of learn the most? Because you always learn more from a loss than a win. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of what, like, you know, I don't like Mahmoud. He was a great striker. Um, I'm a good striker too. You know, I proved that, but you know, I, I, I should have mixed it up more. You know, with the wrestling and the transition, you know, I, I have all these pieces, and like I wasn't really using it. I was still focusing on the striking. So, I guess that was part of the reason I went over to AKA. You know, like I'm, my base is wrestling, and it's like uh, where do wrestlers go? They go to AKA, and uh, like I said, it was Conrad. That really kind of pushed you. you know, it, was, it was in between like Sanford. I was thinking about Sanford because they got a really good thing going on down there, and then old AKA, and, and this is this is where I'm at. So good man, good fit, and good opponent here, Bruno Silva, twenty and six record. What do you know about him? How do you feel like you match up against him here? Uh, Bruno, yeah, he's he's on a tear, man. He's got a big uh, 
collection of knockout victories. I think he's got like 17 or 18 knockouts or something. So the guy's got – he's very heavy-handed. Um, and he's dangerous. What can you say? You know, but everybody hits hard in the UFC. Uh, that's the thing. Well, what makes him stand out more than everybody else? I, I can't say. Mm-hmm. I respect his power. He's a good fighter. Um, but I think I've been in the bright lights <clears> – <throat> way longer i fought much better competition I'm, you know so i'm more experienced in that manner and more well, well-rounded man i think I'm, I'm a smarter fighter than him training partners uh who, who are you mainly getting to work with over there i know deron wins another middleweight over there i know edmund shabazian was over yeah. there too who, who are you mainly getting to work with yeah uh so edmund came in for a little bit we got a, a few rounds with him but he he's back to doing his thing uh, deron's been here the whole time um as far as like like, like big names those are the big ones i'd say but like man like just the group of people and the coaching staff like you got like kane velasquez running practices and, and i get to work with dc and all these you know these great champions it's insane it's incredibly motivating you know yeah um do you train with some of the smaller yeah, guys too like an islam mahashev or any of those guys or is it mainly just the, the heavier guys uh, no i didn't so i got here right like right when he was about to fight um, I guess Tiago Moises, I yeah, guess. That's right. It was a while back. Yeah. He was like towards the end of his camp. But like, you know, and the Russian crew is very tight knit and close. And I wasn't allowed in just like that, right? I was an outsider. Like, who is this guy? Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, so I actually didn't get to train. I, I got to train with one of the, the Dagestani uh, guys. He's a middleweight. Uh, I don't even know his name. No worries. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, the AKA has like a. Uh, you know, like the main crew, I guess, of guys, you know, maybe they're not in the UFC, but, um, yeah, yeah. a solid group of guys. So, yeah. Good, good stable. So a lot, ton of, tons of guys to work with and tons of, tons of grappling. Like, it's a tough schedule here, man. Like, and you're expected to be there every day. You know, if you don't show up, you got to say something to the coach at least, uh, you know. But you, so it you reminds like me that, of though. Like, That's one of the things I know even talking to you and Eric that you liked about TriStar. Eric is an Eric Spicely is that one of the things you liked about TriStar is it was yeah. very structured. And, and you sort of, I, I think, I can't remember if it was him or you who told me this, but you, you like having that sort of accountability. Like, hey, you got to be here this time. And that way things are just more organized and everyone's kind of on the same page, right? Yeah, I do feel like uh, you need some accountability. Um you need people looking over your back, like watching over you. Like it's important to have a good team behind you, you know, like mm-hmm. there's strength in numbers and, and nobody does this by themselves. So um, that's one of the things I really like about AKA is like it's a, it's a real tight team, yeah. you know. Awesome. That's uh, and everybody, awesome. everybody knows that. That's kind of that's the, that's the tale. You know? Yeah. It's always been the tale of this place. So who's going to be in your corner for this fight with the new team? Who's going to be in, in the cage with you? Uh so I got, I've been working with Ron Kessler a lot. Oh, nice. He's one of the coaches down here. Um, and then I got Conrad coming. Conrad's my striking coach. He's got to talk me how to jab, for God's sakes. Um, and then my buddy Theo. He's going to be my training buddy for the uh, for fight week. And that's it. Cool. Keeping it simple. Uh, how, how do you see this fight unfolding on October 16th? Are we going to see the, the explosive Andrew Sanchez like we saw two fights ago? Remember that fight? Oh yeah, the, the, the chaos. yeah. This is going to be I'm definitely a revamp, man. I'm a completely different fighter. I, I think since coming here, getting out of my comfort zone, like I'm not going to be the same. You know, I'm going to um, come in much more composed and calculated. I'm doing so much like visualizing. I'm working with sports psychologists, getting everything in order because it's easy to get lost in the mix of the. The giant sea of like endless techniques and it's easy to get confused you know so i feel like i i got a game plan and i know i i know very specifically what i'm going to do and i plan on doing that right so like uh this is it's a very well thought out fight this time and sometimes i would just kind of go into it and like have more of a, a vague understanding of what i'm going to do like i really it's going to be like surgical precision like that. That's you good. Know? You got to put that in a T-shirt. Surgical precision. Yeah, if you were, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be a good one. Yeah, you got to got to trademark <laughs> that. I want my ten percent. Um, how many more fights do you have left on your contract? You know, two. Two. Okay, so this one and then one more, and then we you talk about re-upping or seeing what the next steps are, right? This is this is a big one. I mean, like since I've signed uh, the new contract, I lost one. I lost the Vittori. 
and I got a nice knockout, and I lost to Mahmoud. If I lose again, <laughs> it's not good. Yeah, but if you win this um, one, then that's that's you got a good negotiating rights going into the next contract, right? Man, if I win it again, yeah, exactly. And 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 if I win impressively, you know, I'll have another fight. And then if I win that, you know what I mean? It's like I still have the potential. Like I'm right on that that cusp. Still, I still believe more than I, you know, as much as or not more than I ever have. <laughs> um. I, I'm really excited. I'm fucking excited, man. I can tell. You, I like, can tell. It's the, good. This move has been really, really good for me. I'm glad. It's, it's really important to get out of your comfort zone, you know? 100%. So and that, that's important. for anyone across the board. You got to get out of, you know, what, what is it? Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know the quote, but it's like, you know, any, anytime you're fearful, it's usually, you, it elevates you. You know, you got you to gotta do something that you're not used to. And if you're stagnant, you're you're not living, yeah. right? You got you to gotta keep that pulse yeah. going. So. I, t- I totally hear you on yeah. that. Um, before we get out of here, I, I don't know if you still keep in touch with him or not, but Cleo Rountree picked up a pretty big win a couple of weeks ago, really dominant performance. Oh, I don't yeah. know if you're in touch with him still, but that was a pretty impressive win. I know some people said, you know, their, their comments about the yeah. way it ended, but still that was, a, that was an absolute slaughter out there at two of five. Yeah. Yeah. Khalil's a nasty striker, man. And is a good dude. And I'm real happy for him. But yeah, the, <laughs> the finish was cringe. Like I, it was hard to watch. Like that's, I couldn't imagine, you know what I mean? Like, poor guy, his knees like shredded. But um, yeah, man, Khalil is, he's an incredible fighter. What, what, what's there to say about that? You know, I was like, not surprised. You saw he got, did to go Kansaki and like, don't strike with Khalil. Yeah. That's the moral of the story. Yeah, no, I agree. Uh, Andrew, thanks so much for doing this, man. Uh, for those who don't know, I totally dropped the ball. Yes. We had to reschedule this a couple times. And you know what? Now, you know what's even worse? I didn't even know you were in San Jose. We're on the same time zone. So I could have booked this in the proper oh. Pacific time because I'm in Vancouver, right? So I'm actually not that far yeah, from you. Yeah, I'm like two hours true. plane ride or whatever. But uh, either way, uh, let people know where they can get a hold of you on social media. And if you got any sponsors or shout outs, I'll give you the last word. Of course, yeah. Uh, at El Dirte Sanchez across the board for social media. Um, thanks to my manager, Danny Rubenstein, uh, my gyms and coaches, AKA TriStar, um, Nicole, my uh, the old lady, and that about sums it up, man. And you, man, you've been around since the beginning That's interviewing right. me. You know, like I feel like we got history, so I appreciate you. No, I appreciate you for always uh, giving me the interview, man. It's uh, it's always a pleasure.